Good morning and welcome to morning prayer on this Tuesday in the eighth week after Pentecost. Brought to you from the Episcopal Church of the Atonement in the Edgewater neighborhood of Chicago, Illinois. I'm Brother Ron Fox. For those of you who use the Book of Common Prayer to pray the office, morning prayer begins as usual on page 80, followed by the Venite on page 82. Today's Psalms are 79, 80, and 81, beginning on page 701. The canticles are 13 and 18 on pages 90 and 93. It's our tradition and custom here at Church of the Atonement to light a candle, regardless of where we may be signifying the presence of God in our midst. Mine is lit. If that's part of your practice, please go ahead and do that now. We'll take just a moment and prepare our ourselves for morning prayer on this Tuesday in the eighth week after Pentecost. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Psalm 79, 80, and 81, beginning on page 701. O God, the heathen have come into your inheritance. They have profaned your holy temple. They have made Jerusalem a heap of rubble. They have given the bodies of your servants as food for the birds of the air and the flesh of your faithful ones to the beasts of the field. They have shed their blood like water on every side of Jerusalem, and there was no one to bury them. We have become a reproach to our neighbors, an object of scorn and derision to those around us. How long will you be angry, O Lord? Will your fury blaze like fire forever? Pour out your wrath upon the heathen who have not known you, and upon the kingdoms that have not called upon your name. For they have devoured Jacob, and made his dwelling a ruin. Remember not our past sins, let your compassion be swift to meet us. For we have been brought very low. Help us, O God our Savior, for the glory of your name. Deliver us and forgive us our sins for your name's sake. Why should the heathen say, where is their God? Let it be known among the heathen and in our sight that you avenge the shedding of your servant's blood. Let the sorrowful sighing of the prisoners come before you. And by your great might, spare those who are condemned to die. May the revilings with which they reviled you, O Lord, Return sevenfold into their bosoms, for we are your people and the sheep of your pasture. We will give you thanks forever and show forth your praise from age to age. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? 
You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors. And our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. You have brought a vine out of Egypt. You cast out the nations and planted it. You prepared the ground for it. It took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered by its shadow and the towering cedar trees by its boughs. He stretched out his tendrils to the sea and its branches to the river. Why have you broken down its wall? So that all who pass by pluck off its grapes. The wild boar of the forest has ravished it. And the beasts of the field have grazed upon it. Turn now, O God of hosts, look down from heaven, behold and tend this vine. Preserve what your right hand has planted. They burn it with fire like rubbish. At the rebuke of your countenance, let them perish. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand. The son of man you have made so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord, God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. Sing with joy to God our strength. And raise a loud shout to the God of Jacob. Raise a song and sound the timbrel. The merry harp and the lyre. Blow the ram's horn at the new moon. And at the full moon, the day of our feast. For this is the statute for Israel. A law of the God of Jacob. He laid it as a solemn charge upon Joseph when he came out of the land of Egypt. I heard an unfamiliar voice saying, I eased his shoulder from the burden. His hands were set free from bearing the load. You called on me in trouble and I saved you. I answered you from the secret place of thunder and tested you at the waters of Meribah. Hear, O my people, and I will admonish you. O Israel, if you would but listen to me, there shall be no strange God among you. You shall not worship a foreign God. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and said, Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. And yet my people did not hear my voice. And Israel would not obey me. So I gave them over to the stubbornness of their hearts to follow their own devices. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. I should soon subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their foes. Those who hate the Lord would cringe before him and their punishment would last forever. But Israel would I feed with the finest wheat and satisfy him with honey from the rock. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give me a moment, please. reading from the book of Joshua. Rahab let the two men whom Joshua had set, sink, sent secretly as spies down by a rope through the window, for her house was on the outer side of the city wall, and she resided within the wall itself. She said to them, 
Go toward the hill country, so that the pursuers may not come upon you. Hide yourselves there three days, until the pursuers have returned. Then afterward you may go your way. The men said to her, We will be released from this oath that you have made us swear to you, if we invade the land and you do not tie this crimson cord in the window through which you let us down, and you do not gather into your house your father and mother, your brothers and all your family. If any of you go out of the doors of your house into the street, they shall be responsible for their own death, and we shall be innocent. But if a hand is laid upon any who are with you in the house, we shall bear the responsibility for their death. But if you tell this business of ours, then we shall be released from this oath that you have made us swear to you. She said, According to your words, so be it. She sent them away, and they departed. Then she tied the crimson cord in the window. They departed and went into the hill country and stayed there three days until the pursuers returned. The pursuers had searched all along the way and found nothing. Then the two men came down again from the hill country. They crossed over, came to Joshua, son of Nun, and told him all that had happened to them. They said to Joshua, Truly the Lord has given all the land into our hands. Moreover, all the inhabitants of the land melt in fear before us. Here ends the reading. A Song of Praise, Canticle 13, on page 90. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radius of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths. In the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Now I am speaking to you Gentiles. Inasmuch then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I glorify my ministry in order to make my own people jealous, and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? If the part of the dough offered its first fruits is holy, then the whole batch is holy. And if the root is holy, then the branches also are holy. But if some of the branches were broken off, and you, a wild olive shoot, were grafted in their place to share the rich root of the olive tree, do not boast over the branches. If you do boast, remember that it is not you that support the root, but the root that supports you. You will say, branches were broken off so they might be gra grafted in. That is true. They were broken off because of their unbelief, but you stand only through faith. So do not become proud, but stand in awe. For God did not spare the natural branches, perhaps he will not spare you. Note then the kindness and the severity of God. Severity toward those who have fallen, but God's kindness toward you, provided you continue in his kindness, otherwise you also will be cut off. And even those of Israel, if they do not persist in unbelief, will be grafted in, for God has the power to graft them in again. But if you have been cut from what is by nature a wild olive tree and grafted, contrary to nature, into a cultivated olive tree, how much more will these natural branches be grafted back into their own olive tree? Here ends the reading. Canticle 18, A Song to the Lamb, on page 93. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God, for you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God, from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so, to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, we worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. The Apostles' Creed on page 96, followed by the Lord's Prayer, and Suffrages A on page 97. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. 
He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Bless this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, and all the souls of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honor of your name. Amen. We now come to the prayers on behalf of the Episcopal Church of the Atonement and the wider church. You may offer whatever prayers, petitions, and thanksgivings you have, either silently or aloud. If you have a particular prayer request, you can put it in the chat feature of this broadcast, and I will do my best to get to it through the course of the prayers, which are about to follow. Our prayers for the week of July 14th, for the sick, for those in any need or trouble, for all those who have asked for our prayers. Ellen, Steve, Rob L, Cheryl, Sean, Jonathan, Devin, Killian, Dennis, Mark, former President Carter, all with COVID-19, Kelly, Ryan B, Kathy S, Miller, Jason, Harry, Tyler, Cecilia, Ron E, William Sr., Jim, Bill, Andrea, Norma Jean, Karen, Janice, John, Kurt, all who mourned, especially Father Matthew and family. For those critically wounded at the Trump assassination attempt in Pennsylvania, for Ken, Deacon, Elizabeth, Jean, David, Thomas, and Greg, priests. For an end to war and violence, especially in the Middle East and in Ukraine, we pray for justice and for an end to violence and division in our neighborhood, city, and nation. For all healthcare workers, especially Joseph Basil, Jackie, Gary, Will, Choi, Erica K, Larry, Kieran, Lee, Carrie, William, Eric, Lisa, Thomas, and Emily. For all families and children in this city and state, for all expected parents, and for all prisoners. For members of my military services on active duty, especially Celeste and Nate, and for Scott, serving as security in Iraq. For Paula, our bishop, Charles, our rector, Amanda and Dave, our wardens, and for the members of our vestry. For our presiding bishop-elect, Sean, for our sister parishes of St. Benedict's and St. Matthew's in Chiapas, Mexico. The consecration of Cara wagner Shear as Bishop of Rochester. She used to be the rector here in Chicago of St. John's Irving Park. For the birthdays of George Watson, Charles Bonilla, and Karen Willems. The wedding anniversary of John Perryman and Marissa Baker. 
of our prayer for the departed. Remember Nancy, Nancy Bonilla, the aunt of Charles Bonilla, Corey Comprator, who was killed at the Trump rally in Pennsylvania, the actress Shannon Doherty, and Judy Belushi Pisano. And at the anniversary of their deaths were James Edward Hartung, Charmaine Webb, Carl Rice, Jackie Forshee, Peter Jensen, and R. Donald Waltz. And we have this prayer for peace written by Brother Richard Edward BSG. O oh God, may your peace stand between us this day and the threat of political violence. May our call to compassion and common good overtake the temptation to retribution. And may the hearts of neighbors be turned one to another for the sake of all your beloved children. In Christ's name we pray in the strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The General Thanksgiving on page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. Above all, for your measurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you in the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be the God of hope. Fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That concludes morning prayer on this Tuesday in the eighth week after Pentecost. Thank you so much for being here with us this morning on Google Meet. We're here every morning at 8.30 for morning prayer from the Episcopal Church of the Atonement in the Edgewater neighborhood of Chicago, Illinois. This is Tuesday, so there's a Mass today at noon. Evening prayer also on Google, Google Meet at 5.30 this evening. Wednesday's Mass at 7 p.m. Thursday at noon, Friday morning at 7.30, Saturday the Rosary at 9.30, followed by the Healing Mass at 10, and on Sunday our usual round of Masses at 8, 9, and 11. Again, thanks so much for being here with us, and we hope everyone is with power this morning. I know some people in the South Suburbs have no power after last night's big storms. Have yourself a great day, everyone. Stay safe out there. God bless.